with the public comment. Um, please remember the Penner School Board welcomes public comment. According to policy 903, we remind everyone of the following. Public comments shall be limited to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the board. Participants must be re recognized by the presiding officer and note their name and municipality. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer rather than to individual board members, district employees, or members of the public. A speaker may speak once during each comment period. Please note that these sessions are designated for comments and to protect the confidentiality and privacy rights of all members of our community, the board encourages members of the public to direct any comments regarding particular individuals, such as students or district employees, privately to the superintendent or other appropriate administrators or board members or to communicate with the board and superintendent privately by sending an email to psdschoolboard at penridge.org. Questions raised and not addressed may be followed up at a later time. Any public comment? All right, here we see none. We have started. And we have the technology summer review with Mrs. Miller. Good evening. What I would like to go over tonight is just the technology summer review, everything that technology department has done over the past summer. Um, summer, as you are probably aware of, is a very busy time for the technology department. So I just want to tell you a little bit about what we did, um, not only on the um, infrastructure side, but on the end user side, and then on the data side as well. Technical difficulty. going on. So we um, began, or not began, but in the middle of the summer we had the um, privilege um, granted to us by the board last year of adding two new IT members. So these were two um, contracted positions that we were able to add to help to bolster our support out in the field. So we very happily um, uh, welcomed Mr. Dan Alexander and he is providing middle school support and Mr. Chester McCullough, and he is mainly in the high school support. Um, the plan, though, is to cross-train them among all the buildings so that we have a little bit more depth. So um, Dan came to us right at the end of July, and Chester came to us in the middle of August, so right when things were really gearing up. So both gentlemen have taken to the district beautifully. Um, they hit the ground running, been very, very happy been getting good reports for, you know, from them um, out in the field. So I think we really hit the jackpot with these two individuals and I'm really happy that you know, they're working for the district at this point. So I thank you guys for allowing us to go out and actually add a couple new positions. Now let's see, there we go, all right. So every year we um, pick a blackout date that we call where we bring everything down in the district and we do all of our infrastructure updating. So this year we picked a Friday, we usually pick a Friday because it is least impactful to everybody else in the district. So we were down for about 10 hours. It was a fun-filled day, fun-filled Friday. Um, we upgraded our NetApp solution, which is our um, storage solution. Uh, we had to update firmware solution on um, the actual uh, disk themselves. And they are aging, so at some point this year I'm gonna be back in front of you with like a solution, recommended solution to get rid of the NetApp. 
storage because it is now six years old. So we're going to want to um, look this year at actually updating that technology. But for this summer and for this year, we went through and we did um, the upgrade. We also upgraded our UCS firmware, which is kind of the brains of the whole network. We updated our 5508 controller, which is our wireless controller. We updated our firewall. There were a couple things I didn't put on here. We got a new domain controller, which again is kind of the brains of the operation. Um, so it took us that 10 hours and then we came back on Saturday and we finished up. So we had a lot to do in you know a relatively short amount of time. Everything went pretty smoothly. We had one drive go, de go bad while we were doing the upgrade, but because of support, we had that swapped out on Monday morning. So nobody, nothing skipped a beat. So, so that was kind of what we did on the back end as far as the network. Then we upgraded our virtual environment as well. So we run what's called VMware here, and that's like virtual um, servers. So we were able to retire our virtual desktop interface server, which is VDI. So some of you may remember when we went out and we got the VDI thing clients, I think it was five years ago at this point. They served a purpose at the time, um, but they kind of, they were at the end of the road. So we have totally retired them. We did not relicense them for this year. So we replaced the VDIs. They were really in some of the labs, some of the um, libraries. So we were able to replace a lot of the VDIs with um, older desktops that we had pulled out from some of the teacher workstations. So we didn't really replace with new technology, but it's new in that area. We also retired about 20 plus um, virtual servers. Some of them were just test servers. Some of them were um, from the exchange update that we ended up doing. Some of them were just, um, uh, Kronos was one of them that we had moved off of one server onto another. So we retired all in all right, right around 20 servers which also freed up a lot of space for us. So that was good. Then we had to upgrade to what was called the ESX 6.5 um, platform. So we actually had to, we have four different blades they're called and we moved from one blade to another, did the update and moved everything back from one blade back to the other. So we kind of played a little shell game to do the update. We were able to do this in an evening so we didn't have to take a total blackout. We could do this hot um, this took maybe about four hours to do this total update. Something else that we did, um, and we did this actually with E-rate funding, we um, replaced and installed um, additional wireless access points in the middle schools. So currently we had an access point just about in every other classroom in the middle school, but as we're now increasing the number of devices in the middle school. We really need one AP in each classroom to make sure that we have coverage for all the students. So what we ended up doing was, and again, this was e-ratable, um, we replaced the existing APs with the newest model. Again, I think it's the newest protocol, 802.11ac, uh, close to the newest protocol. And then we um, replaced the old ones and then we put new ones in. So now every classroom has an AP throughout the middle school, so we shouldn't have coverage problems. So and then we had to go through and we had to um, update the firmware on all those units as well. And there's approximately 50 of them in each school, so it's a total of 150. We did um, hire a contractor to do that. We went through E Plus to do that, and then they sub out like the cabling and, and the actual installation. The last thing that we did that was the biggie of the summer was we migrated um, our email. So Exchange, we went from Exchange Server 2010 to 2016. So we migrated a little over 1,800 mailboxes that weekend. You guys probably got a lot of emails saying we're gonna migrate. You might have you know, a little glitchy here or there. It went relatively smoothly. We only had two mailboxes that must have been a little corrupt that we had to do manually. Everything else we were able to migrate. It took the entire weekend though. It took from Thursday night until Sunday night, actually, to move everybody, but it did move. And I don't think anybody, I you know, missed any email or anything. Like, I think it, everything went smoothly. So the big thing here, as far as from the end user's perspective, is Outlook Web Application, or OWA. That has a brand new look to it now, and it looks much more like a Windows application. It looks much more like Outlook, the client. We were still on such an old version, 2010 that when you logged in via you know, your email or via the web, 
it really had a different look and you were missing some functionality too. So I think um, the look is much sleeker now. If you have to you know, go in from home, it just has a much nicer look and it's more robust. Uh, there were some calendar share issues with the old OWA um, that are gone now because of just the new version. So that was kind of on the back end of everything that was done. And now I'll talk about a little bit about what we did for um, the end user, the end user product here. So at the end of each year, we collect all the high school laptops. So it's approximately 2,400. I always say approximately 2,400, 600 per grade. So we collect 9 through 12. The grade 12 laptops, since these are um, leased, we clean them, we inventory them, and we wipe them clean, and then we send them back to the lease company. So grades 9 through 11, we re-image, we clean them, and we um, repair them. If anything needs to go out for repair, we send them out for repair in the summertime. So we have six little worker bees, so six little um, summer employees, interns, and they clean. They do a lot of cleaning all summer because we touch each and every student, lap, or every student machine. Because if you can believe it, they get a little gross maybe, you know, with you know, the kids and the, and the touching. So um, we had a phenomenal group of interns this year. We had six men, uh, young men and women who were just fabulous. So can't say enough of good about these group of six. So um, they cleaned everything and, and we got through everything. Um, we opened up the AP student laptop distribution early again this year. This was something that we started last year. So we gave the opportunity for the AP students who have summer work to pick up their laptop in early August. By then, we had them all re-imaged and we could actually open it up. Uh, there were 506 students who were eligible to take advantage of early pickup and we had 356 of them come in. So I thought that was pretty good odds. So then at the high school, what happens next is we get the ninth grade class laptops come in. Um, they come in a little later, a little later <laughs> every year. That makes us all sweat and lose just a little bit of sleep. So, but they did come in two weeks before school started, I guess it was. So we got 650 laptops in and we um, were able to get them um, imaged, inventoried, um, you know, through the system so we could start to distribute them. We actually started to distribute them on Thursday. This is the ninth grade I'm talking about. So we distributed the ninth grade on Thursday, Friday, Monday and tomorrow is the last day. And the way they're distributed is the student comes through um, into the library area and they get their laptop and then Mrs. Gurish goes through a little um, orientation with each and every one of them. So I think she can probably say that in her sleep then. She'll be glad when it's Wednesday, I'm sure. <laughs> so because there's 650 kids or I guess right around 600 students. Uh, the rest of the laptops for grades 10 through 12 we open up um, distribution the week of August 20th, and we had distribution Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week. We distributed a little over 1,100 of them um, total, and then the rest come and they pick them up the first week of school. I think the kids are in denial that school's starting. Some of them are gung-ho, we need to get them, and some of them I think just say, I'll pick it up when I have to. Um, we also make sure that they go through um, the InfoSnap process, and they do the paperwork that is required to pick up their laptop. So, um, and this is the second year now that we have the optional um, ADP insurance program. So for $35 a, a, for the year, um, the laptop is covered against accidental damage. Uh, and I just looked at the stats and were about 3% who have declined the insurance this year. Last year we were between three and five, so we're right in there. So what that means is if they do decline the insurance and something happens to it, the parent is responsible for it. Uh, we also got at the um, high school level, we had about 50 new, 50 plus, I'm gonna say, I think it was 54 new teacher laptops, and that's the replacement cycle. So we were on our fourth year, they were on their fourth year of the older laptops, so they all got new ones. Now in the middle schools, we, do it a little bit differently. So we have a classroom set of Lenovo 300Es in each of the core sixth grade classrooms. So this is our second year um, injecting this technology into the middle schools. So we moved the existing sixth grade laptops up to the seventh grade classrooms and then we inject the new ones into sixth grade. 
And then next year, we're going to move 6th and 7th up to 7th and 8th and again inject into the 6th grade. So the conversation will come up this year. Do we change? Right now, the students do not take them home in the middle school. They stay right in their classroom. So we've been talking about the past two years, you know, do we make a change in that program? Do we allow them to actually take them home and make it a true one-to-one? -one? So I think we'll have that conversation again to see where we can, you know, progress with the technology in the middle school, especially with Canvas coming on board in the middle school. So for this year, though, they don't move the classrooms. Like, they stay in the classrooms. The student picks up, I go into math class, I'm, you know, number one. I go into English class, I'm always number three. So this laptop does not move around with the student. The laptop stays in the classroom. We had really good success with that last year, so we decided, since we're still in the phase-in process, just to kind of let that model work through. But I think maybe next year we'll be looking at doing something a little bit different. Then our buddy STEM, um, we are adding an additional cart in each middle school for STEM 2. So um, we're getting another cart. Last year we got one cart for each of the STEM, for each of the middle schools, um, 50, no, 30 laptops, I'm sorry, 35, uh, shared between STEM 1 and STEM 2. So this year we budgeted for just a cart for STEM 2, and it's a little bigger screen because they're doing a little bit more with Corel Draw, a little bit more CAD work. And the teachers were saying it's kind of hard on that 11 inch screen, so we went with a little bigger screen for them. Those were delivered today. So, so I got word, yeah. So they were delivered today. Everything's been a little bit slow this year for some reason. I don't know if it's the weather or what, but. So um, hopefully we'll have them out into the middle schools by the end of the week. At the elementary schools, we set up a new car in each of the libraries. So if you recall, there was a program improvement um, with, that included the librarians at the elementary schools. So each library now has a cart with 15 Lenovo 300Es. So again, very similar to what you guys are using up there. In fact, I think they are the 300Es. And 15 iPads. We also had to replace, we injected 330 of the 300Es into each school because we were on a replacement cycle for those carts as well. And then again, we clean and re-image every student computer. We're still using old iMacs in the elementary schools. And I see some people lifting their eyes there. But we have them um, provisioned as Windows machines. So we have them up to Windows 10 somehow. I'm not quite sure how because they are between 8 and 9 years old. This is the end of the road for those. And I, so we're going to have to, we'll have another conversation about that too at some point um, in the year. So those iMacs are at the end of life. We don't have anything to replace them with. But they are an additional um, workstation in the classroom. So the teachers like that. And they all love the nice big screen. So, um, so they're still hanging on. So we're, we're still there. Um, we also in, installed a USB dock into each of the classrooms for the teachers. When the elementary teachers got their laptops, they did not get a docking station. The high school and the middle schools did get a docking station. So this year we got a docking station for the elementaries. That just allows them to keep all the peripherals plugged in and they just have to take their laptop rather than plugging everything back in. So it just makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit neater, um, a little bit easier to just plug and go. Um, and then at the end of the summer we put everything back. So And that's in every classroom at every level. So the custodians pull it apart and we put it back together. It takes twice to put it back together, but we do put it back together. So that's what's happening at the elementary schools. Um, as far as the iPads, we do use Jamf, which is our MDM or our mobile device management system. So we had an upgrade to Jamf, and that was just kind of the normal upgrade. So we went through the upgrade process. Um, we now have approximately um, 1,000 iPads district-wide. They love them at the elementary schools, and they really like them for the special ed students as well. So they really fit nicely into some of the curriculums. So we collect all the iPads, we clean them, we upgrade the ones that we can. We do have some that are kind of end of life as well that we can't upgrade the iOS, but for the most part we can get them upgraded. But some of the really early iPads we can't. And then there's always new apps that are being added to the catalog as they're, as they're approved. We did some training this summer for the administrators and for the support staff. So we brought the, um, it was predominantly the uh, principals and their support staff 
We brought them together. We did it for the district office, though, too. Um, we had a training on SunGuard, SunGuard version 5.2. So SunGuard is our HR business package, and we're upgrading from version 5.0 to 5.2. 5.0 is kind of not going to be supported anymore at the end of this year, I guess it is. So um, we're in the middle right now of like a parallel payroll, so we're doing all the testing before we can actually migrate to version 5.2. We wanted to do some training, obviously, before we just like said, hey, here's you know the new version. It's not a whole lot of new functionality um, that's involved, but the interface is wildly different and it's wildly better, actually. So we got um, good you know, feedback for the new version from the administrators and the support staff. So I'm hoping if we can get through this parallel payroll, we're kind of hung up on one area, that we can actually do this migration either by the end of this week or next week. Um, again, they didn't think it was going to be that disruptive. So we, did, we, we, we went through SunGuard, and then we revisited Kronos, which is our timekeeping software. It was kind of a year later, so we wanted to do just a follow-up to see if people had any questions and to get mm -hmm. feedback. Um, one of the really positive things that we heard was the mobile app. There's a Kronos mobile app, and everybody seems to love that because you can request your time off on your phone. Um, managers can approve time on their phone, they can see schedules on their phone. So that was really um, a resounding yay that people really are in favor of you know, the Chromos mobile app. Uh, we did a little bit of training on PowerSchool incident management, which is a new way to report discipline in PowerSchool. So it's a whole module, it's a whole system within PowerSchool and it is much more robust for reporting for state reportable events for PIMS, um, so we're getting the ball rolling on that as well. So we had some training on that. And then Exact Vision is um, the security app for the security cameras. We trained the security um, officers. We got the, the app on their phone and the principals the app on their phone as well so they can pull up you know, the, the cameras on their phone. And then um, the tech integrators have been doing OneNote training um, as Dr. Bolton is coming into office here, he um, will be sharing a lot of documentation through OneNote, so we wanted to make sure that, you know, cabinet was trained, I think um, the principals have been trained, support staff has been trained, so we're trying to get everybody up and running on OneNote as well. So that was, we offered two training sessions, the same training, two different times. One was like August 8th and one was August 21st or something, so we ran it twice. Then the last leg of the stool of what we do is the data. So there's data, 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 as you can imagine, in, um, within the district. So it all begins with our rollover of PowerSchool, which is our student information system. Once PowerSchool is rolled over and everybody is promoted, then all the ancillary data systems like busing, library, food services, Link it, Blackboard, they can all be updated then. So PowerSchool is the hub, and everything else comes, lives out of PowerSchool, comes out of PowerSchool. Um, we got the state reporting filed for the 17-18 school year, uh, student account management, all the new um, student accounts, all the new students, the students who left, we have them aged out. Um, we're extending Naviance to grades three through five, um, and that's going to help with the new future ready index is the way that we're at. You're going to hear about that a little bit later. Um, so that's where we're going to hold the artifacts for grades three through five as well. So we had to extend Naviance to some of the lower grades. And then there's a new program, um, and this one's actually a free service. It's called SCORE. And the counselors at the high school are going to be using that. It's kind of a supplement to Naviance. Um, again, it's a free product, and so we're going to give that a, a go as well. So that has to be set up as well. And that, in a semi-condensed format, is what we did over the summer, what I did on my summer vacation, right? So we're up and running. There's always issues here and there. We haven't quite had that big it yet where something implodes and we weren't expecting it. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Um, I would say, what's it? We're waiting for it. But it hasn't happened yet. So we're maybe, maybe we're safe this year. I don't know. But that's where we are. So, any questions? Can I answer anything? I just have one question and then some public praise. 
Uh, you mentioned a couple times in terms of delivery dates. Is that something on our end or on the provider's end that's causing that? Excellent question. So something else I'd like to come at you guys with at some point. So we don't order anything until after the final budget is approved, which puts us behind the eight ball. So if there's a way that we can possibly next year, even if we can order after the preliminary budget is passed, it would really go a long way for what we need to do and get done in such a small amount of time because it really does, it, it really taxes everybody. Um, you know, we get it done, but it really would be nice if we could order a little bit earlier. And I just wanted to thank you for a couple of things. I mean, there's obviously lots of things that you just went over and there's lots of things to celebrate, but just personally, as I've observed and I've, I've been around, the first thing is in terms of the middle school support in all three middle schools, as I've just been interacting with teachers and just kind of asking them how it's going, one of the things is always kind of the setup and is your room working the appropriate way? And, and all the devices weren't in yet in terms of middle school students and so that piece, but to a, in, in each building, multiple people commented on the access points seem to have already helped in terms of accessing machines, even on the teacher end, as well as just the availability of the extra support. So I want to thank the board, but I also want to thank you in terms of your planning for that and your team. Um, Mr. Alexander seems to be doing a nice job in the middle school people uh, gave a shout out to him. I also want to thank you for the early distribution of laptops. I want to encourage you to continue that, that as we can advertise that and that becomes the norm. I think it also helps on your end to be able to get rid of some of that and to free up those opening day things. But I think also for students to have them and to, and to start planning and interacting with materials, as well as your planned rhythms for updating machines for both students and classrooms. So I just have really appreciated in the district a lot of planning that way around facilities, but also in terms of the structure of equipment and just the thoughtful way you are in terms of adding equipment, but also replacing the equipment so that there's always um, appropriate resources in the classroom for the students. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. We, we try. I'm very proud of my team, so thank you. And I'll be very mad if the big hit happens tomorrow. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, no big hit. No. Thank you so much. No. Thank you so much. Um, I can tell that your team does a lot over the summer. <laughs> very productive. We appreciate it. And we'll have to keep that in mind next year for the, for the budget, definitely, to get you guys rolling quicker. So. We'll work together on that. All right. Um, Great. Thank you so much for your time. And next up, we have Mrs. Gersh with the Canvas update. 